The response to Andre de Reuter's allegations against the ANC was both predictable and concerning. It was predictable that the ANC would attack him and shift the blame instead of dealing with the issues he raised. Labeling de Reuter as right-wing is just a lazy attempt at redirecting the narrative towards race. And Public Enterprise Minister Gordon's comments that de Reuter should not make political statements is laughable because politics is what has caused load shedding and prohibited de Reuter from doing his job. But what was concerning was how other organizations and citizens responded to de Reuter. Common sense would say that load shedding is a problem the country needs to solve. And so, if someone tells us what is stopping us from solving it, we should at least listen to them. But listening was not the reaction of many people. Instead, they went straight to attack. As I scrolled through Twitter and saw the comments from ordinary South Africans, I was shocked at both the level of ignorance and hatred that people demonstrated. Andre de Reuter was accused of everything, from causing load shedding to treason. Why? Because he's white. There is nothing wrong with objectively evaluating the job he did. Still, when we allow that discussion to be distorted by his race, we lose track of the real issue. And this highlights a more significant problem in our society. I think load shedding is not the biggest problem in South Africa, it is only third on the list. You might say load shedding is destroying the nation. What could be a bigger problem than that? Well, our second most significant problem is the ANC. The ANC is the country's second biggest problem because they are responsible for load shedding. They are also responsible for massive corruption, poor economic growth, and astronomical levels of unemployment. But the ANC is not our biggest problem because they didn't put themselves in power. We did. We could get rid of them, but we don't. Because our biggest problem controls us. South Africa's biggest problem is that we still allow the apartheid mentality of race-based thinking to control us. A lingering effect of apartheid is that many still wear race-tinted visors that obscure their vision of reality. Given our nation's history, this is understandable, but also detrimental. These visors cause us to see people of the same race as friends, and people of other races as enemies. Instead of judging people on merit and by their actions, we judge them only by race. The best example of this can be seen in how we vote. Even though the ANC has harmed this nation, people continue to vote for them. The ANC plays the race card because it is their best leverage over South Africans. They often equate criticism of the ANC to criticism of black leadership, but that is a false comparison because they are not the same things. By all means, vote for a black leader. This nation has many great black leaders, people of integrity who want to serve this nation. Their character makes them good leaders, not their pigment. Some argue that we cannot ignore race because we need race-based laws to address the legacy of apartheid. However, by using race as our determining factor, we are not addressing the legacy of apartheid, we are perpetuating it. We need to stop seeing the country the way the architects of apartheid did, in only black and white. If we want to solve load shedding and all our other problems, we need to start by taking off our tinted glasses and seeing things for what they really are. The architects of apartheid wanted a racially divided nation. Sadly, that is precisely what we are giving them. If you want to know more about what is happening in the world, check out our sponsor's book, The Ministry of Truth, by Ethan Quinn. This book explains how identity politics is used to manipulate society. Please support this channel by liking and subscribing.